Hi everyone, we're going to go over how to name compounds. We'll do so in terms of laying out the rules in terms of a flow chart, okay? And we'll give some examples after that. So when you name a compound, um, the first thing you want to recognize is what are the different parts that you, uh, that you have, okay? So, um, and it all depends on if you have, um, if you start out with a metal or a non-metal, okay? So really quickly on your don't have to write this down, but in your periodic table, okay, it kind of has structure like this, and um, there is sort of a, a staircase I may have mentioned in the past that divides your metals and your non-metals, and so your non-metals are going to be over here, and your metals are going to be to the left of the staircase, all right, kind of a separator. Um, and it's important to recognize what's a metal and what's a non-metal uh, because it's going to affect how you name the compound. There's uh, different rules for it. Okay? So when we're going ahead and we're going to try to name compounds, that's the first thing we want to recognize. All right? So in order to, if you, when you, uh, one type of formula you're going to see is if you have a, a metal uh, plus a non-metal. So hopefully, from our previous unit, when you have a metal and a non-metal, you want to recognize that's an ionic compound. And what you're going to do is um, you have an ionic compound. Uh, so you have uh, a compound that's made of ions, things that have charges. So either a full positive charge or full negative charge. And so what you're going to do uh, in order to name your compound is you're going to use your ion chart. There is a specific way of, of how they came up with these names on, the, on your ion chart. Um, and uh, another thing is that we're going to say no prefixes. Okay, so no prefixes. So your ion chart, and our and this is one ion chart that I'll show you, is that it has the most common or uh, formulas and names of our uh, some different ions. So it doesn't have all of them. It has the most common ones. On the left hand side, you have your positive ions, which are called your cations, and then on the right hand side, you have your negative ions, which which is called anions, and. Uh, the way formulas are written is that the positive one comes first and is on the left, and then on the right hand, on the, what comes second on the right is your negative ions. So and all you need to do is kind of put together what their names are. All right. So, um, so let's go and uh, what we'll do is uh, on a different sheet of paper, we're going to flip over and we'll do some examples of naming ionic compounds. All right. We'll come back to that flow chart. So, for ionic compounds, all right, so let's say I had AlCl3, okay? When I go ahead and name this, um, what you want to do is you want to look in your ion chart and you want to find Al. Now remember, Al is written first, um, so if we didn't know what Al was, it's written first so we know it's a positive ion. So when we look at our ion chart, we're going to see that Al is actually at the top and it has, um, and its name is aluminum. So we're just going to name it according to that. All right, so aluminum, and then the Cl is written second. And so we're on the right-hand side, and we're going to try to find Cl, and it's right here, and it's called chloride. So we don't have to worry about the charges. That's a whole other deal. All we're doing is finding what the names are on the ion chart. And so the name of this... Uh, this compound here is aluminum chloride. That's it. No prefix. It's pretty sweet, huh? All right. Um, if we had something that was like a polyatomic ion, all right, so let's say that we had BAMNO4, all right, what we would do is we would look for these two things. Now, polyatomic ions are a little bit different. 
they're a group of atoms that ha together as a unit have a charge. So when I look at this, I find the metal, which is barium. And kind of, you can do this on your paper, kind of draw a little line there. This must be the positive part, and then this whole thing must be the negative. So on the ion chart, I'm going to look for those parts. So um, Ba is uh, barium. It's right here on our chart. And uh, it turns out that the, the first part of the name doesn't change. So if it's Ba, it's going to be barium. And then MnO4, when you go ahead and try to find that, that's got a funny kind of name. Um, and it is permanganate. All right, so when we name this, it's going to be barium permanganate. Okay, so um, that's, um, that's how we name our ionic, com our ionic compounds. And uh, probably the, the only tricky thing is, let's say we had something like um, FeCl3, okay? So it's a good idea to look at your ion chart, even if you recognize that iron is, um, or Fe is iron. Um, when we look at uh, our ion chart, you'll notice that iron has a positive two charge and a positive three charge. And so we don't know necessarily which one it is yet uh, based upon the formula. Uh, so we're gonna look for, we're gonna look at Cl. And so Cl has a minus charge. So in essence, what we have in this formula is that, or in this compound, is that we have an Fe and we have Cl minuses, Cl minus, Cl minus, Cl minus. Sort of what it looks like on an atomic level. Um, so the iron, we have to figure out the charge on iron to make a neutral compound. So that must be, this, this is a three negative, this must be a three positive. So when we name this, we need to indicate which iron is it. Is it iron two or iron three? So they use Roman numerals here, so iron three and then chloride. Now, coming back to the other example that we did with the chloride, why didn't we write the charge of aluminum here? Well, we don't have to because aluminum only forms one type of ion. Um, some of the elements do form uh, different types of ions. They're called multivalent. Um, and uh, so we do just want to check on the chart just to be sure. Okay, so that's how you name ionic compounds. When you're naming, let's go back to our flow chart here. When you're naming compounds that um, where you had two nonmetals, so a nonmetal plus a nonmetal. You have a nonmetal plus a nonmetal. Uh, that means that you're dealing with a molecular compound. So a molecular compound like, like sugar, for instance, or um, things like that, then, uh, then you will use prefixes. We're basically going to only use those prefixes. When I say prefixes, we're going to say some numerical prefixes like mono, di, and tri. And on the next page after your ion chart, we list them out here for you. So sometimes for two, you might say bi, like bicycle. But for this, we use di for that. So they're all here for you. And I think you've had some experience with them in your math class and maybe your geometry. So. Uh, Let's uh, do some examples of some molecular compounds and tell you the one type of exception to the rule, okay? So with molecular compounds, so with molecular compounds, uh, how you're going to go about naming these. So let's say it was P2O3, okay? Um, what you're going to do, the first part, you're going you're gonna to include the prefix first. So you're going to go di, your two go 
those first. We're going to name the element next, which is phosphorus. And then, again, you do your prefix first. So the second part is try. And then we change the ending for, for this one. So instead of writing oxygen, we write sort of the root, the beginning ox, and then we add I-D-E. Okay? It's sort of the ion name. When you, if you look on the ion chart, for when you find oxygen, it'll be called oxide. But that's how they, that's how they do that. Without going into too much detail, we want, when we write our formula, we want to make sure that we understand that these chemicals are combined chemically in the bond, so we don't want to just write their individual names because then it might be confusing. All right. Um, so that's the deal. It's not too complicated. The only thing if we had, say, for instance, CO2, um, typically the, the abbreviation for one carbon here would be mono. So we would name this monocarbon, and then again, dioxide. So we have the prefixes first. But chemists don't like to write too much extra stuff. So if there's a mono in front of the first one, they, they drop it. So the actual name of this one is just carbon dioxide, which you might be familiar with. Um, as an extension to that, what if we had big C, big O? All right, so, that, so we don't include the mono, so this is going to be carbon. But in the second part, we are going to include the mon, the monoxide, or just monoxide. Okay? So we do include it in the second part, but mono we wouldn't include in the first part. Uh, maybe some un, it's unnecessary. Uh, so that's, uh, that's how we name uh, our compounds, and certainly, you know, we can kind of work backwards from there um, to be able to go from the name to the formula as well. All right, thanks for watching.